Well, viewers, today is 21st of December. That's our longest day in New Zealand. Remember a while ago I had uh, made a video of these line fault indicators that were flashing on the overhead line. Well, I found some in the bin and uh, they've been chucked out. So, end up with four of these devices, even two ones new in boxes. I'm going to have an analysis on one of these. So, yeah, these are still brand new. You get a bit of dust. Complete with the manual instruction device. Uh, they call these devices uh, Flight 110SA. So, yeah, we're going to have a look how they work. Or at least have a look on the internal parts. Okay, this is the top one with the flashing LEDs. It's got a code 04 on there. And that's the bottom part. So, these are the little clips. You need to be careful for you with your fingers. So, yeah, with a hot stick, you hold the device in here, you can click it on the line, and then these clips grab around the cable and they hold the unit on the line. I'll try to do a demo here with a cable. You've got a washing line that's only 2.5 mil, but um, let's see if you can visualize it as best as I can. I got the device here, and well, we'll push it. Click and it clicks itself onto the line. There you go. Hopefully it's visible. I don't know. And uh, yeah, it's holding on, and then it's waiting for power surge. So we need to create that at some stage. But uh, in this video, I'm just going to show the internal parts of this device. Okay, I'll pivot it around in case you haven't seen. So both clips have gone around to the conductor. So now I'm going to unclip this. These springs are pretty strong, you need to be careful you don't get your hands caught in these because it hurts. Uh, let's have a look, it's a bit hard, there's a camera in one hand. Um, I'll just put the camera down, stand by. These are made by Merlin Garin, and this box is super sensitive. I'm going to open it up, it's actually quite interesting. There's a pin here which you can pull out. Just set the trial on this here, so there's a little pin, and then we'll twist this. Quarter turn, and that's it. Just a battery and a call. Obviously the call picks up the flux and there's some electronics on the other side of the board. So I'll see if we can get better access to that. Uh, it looks like it's all glued together but we'll have a closer look in it. And the container is an empty receptacle here. There's these clamps. So yeah, it, it's obviously that call sitting in parallel with the conductor will pick up uh, the magnetic flux when something goes wrong. Battery voltage check here. Tested it before the battery appears to be good. 3.64 volts, so that's all good. The board comes out quite easy. You just wiggle it a bit and it comes out. So it allows for easy replacement of the battery. Oh, there we go, the LEDs just flashed briefly. I don't know how that worked. Oh, it might have activated. I just played with a magnet with it, so it's in a cycle. I'm not sure if you can see it here. Now it's too bright here. I'll put the camera inside and we have a look at it. But uh, it reveals quite nice components to the board. It's uh, very well made. You wouldn't expect any better from Merlin Gurren. It's good quality stuff, so yeah. I'll have a close look inside. It's pretty bright outside here. That's flashing now. I touched the side of the board, so I might probably connect it past the focus. I know there's something you enable the device with a magnet. That's well, quite cool when it flashed. Just have a look if we can get it activated. I'll see if we get a bit of closer on these components. Um, yeah, it's, the LEDs look really cool. They have quite bright, high, high intensity LEDs. And there's my other magnets. See if we can get some action on this device here. And we got some transistors here, I think, and a couple of ICs. A couple of pins are not pop. Oh, yeah, they are populated. They go to a plug. There's a strip. Yeah, there's a couple of bare connectors there. Could be for different type of batteries or something. An exotic IC. I'll try to get the details. Here there's a dip switch, uh, which is uh, set at say 2 is on, 4 is on, 6 is on, and the other ones are off. So 
obviously that has something to do with settings. I need to have a look through the manual, see what it means. And the other side, yeah, it's actually lithium, saft lithium, sun and shine, made in France. And you got that pickup call here, I think that picks up the flux somehow. Probably got a weed switch inside, I think, when uh, something like that. No, no, not sure. I'm not reading the whole book here, but this is uh, just some operating characteristics of this device. Let me just show a few looks here. And here's flash duration. Uh, flash frequency three seconds, so five, seven, or nine. That is just a to save battery as well. That's in French. Clignotement, frequence, frequence. Interesting. Just managed to get the thing to flash. Pretty bright flash. So yeah. Here's a reach switch. I think that might be a resetting device. This is curious. Let's have a look. If I hold a magnet nearby here, see what it does. Oh, that activates the flash. That's the test device, probably, the reed switch. So hold the magnet nearby again. This is quite a powerful magnet. It's one of these tiny neodymiums. So flashing. It obviously does something. I haven't read the instruction of this device, so I'm gonna put this YouTube video off and I'm gonna set it up in an electrical circuit and see how it works. I got the capsule back in there, here in front of the Christmas tree, and it's uh, yeah, very bright. There will be part three on this uh, video series, and. Uh, I'll see if I can create a fault on my capacitor bank or something and to get this thing to operate actually on fault conditions. Thanks for watching. And uh, this is Rodalco of course. Uh, subscribing is free, don't forget that. Cheers!